Welcome to Three and Out with Jason and Kevin. I am Jason. That is Kevin. We are on the Orange and Black Insider on YouTube. Uh, check us out there. Uh, like and subscribe. It's it's Orange and Black Insider, the Orange and Black Insider. It's uh, Three and Out, which is us, and OBI, which is uh, John Sheeran and um, Anthony Casenza. And then on uh, the audio side, on our podcast side, we are on the Believe Network. Uh, our channel is Believe in Cincy, which is B-L-E-A-V. It's OBI, it's us, it's uh, Matt and Willie No Ball, and it's also uh, Talking Football with Bengal Jim and Friends. Um, <laughs> yep. So, we had our bold, our, <laughs> geez, we had our uh, bold prediction show last week before week one of the season, and I told you my first big bold prediction was the Bengals are going to win the Super Bowl this year. Yeah. Yep, uh, yep, yep, yep. And I, uh, I, I refused to name a score uh, yeah. and said that it was going to be at least they were going to beat the Patriots by at yep. least two scores. Minimum. Yeah. At minimum, two scores. Yep. Yep. So, like, I don't know. I mean, I'm not a Michigan football fan, and I'm not like a Notre Dame football fan, but I imagine that what happened on Sunday is similar to like, I don't know if you can really say like, but Appalachian State upsetting Michigan, Northern Illinois upsetting Notre Dame. Either way, we were supposed to win that game. We were supposed to win that game. The Bengals are a better better team. They're favored. I think they might have had the highest spread of 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 the first week. Eight points, they I did. think, was the highest spread. Yeah, eight, eight uh, and, and then they is what I saw. eight and a half. Okay, and then they came in uh, to week one and they looked like shit. And there's no better way to put it. They no. looked unprepared they looked slow they looked like they weren't anticipating anything that they're trying to react to everything uh something i never thought i'd ever say ever but jacoby Brissett outplayed joe burrow 100 percent outplayed joe burrow um the Bengals just couldn't get anything going on offense and then when they did get going things going on offense it just fell apart everything just fell apart uh that was one of the worst games I've seen the Bengals play in the Joe Burrow era, and maybe one of the worst games I've seen the Bengals play in the last 20 years. Like, really, I mean, that's how bad it was against a subpar opponent. That's how bad they were. Sure. Sure. The, the, the um, Patriots did what they could to let the Bengals stick around and win that game, and the Bengals just kept shooting themselves in the foot, just could not yeah. get out of their own way. Go ahead. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, no, no. Uh, I do think that this brings up a, a couple talking points, right? Um, it sucked. I get it. Uh, I don't think anybody who uh, follows this team thinks that this is the standard to which they'll play um, coming up. But I do feel like from my side of it, this was a wake-up call on a few different fronts. Yeah. One, Joe Burrow starts cold. It just happens. Yeah. Um, yeah. We've blamed various issues, various illnesses, various camp issues, um, but all of it had the same through line, which was he got out there and he looked rushed and he looked sped up and he looked jumpy and yep. he has no excuse this time. And he looked rushed and he looked sped up and he looked jumpy. And I just think this might be something we have to um, accept going forward that Burrow requires a couple games to calm down. Usually it's about four. Hopefully it's less this time with training camp, but I don't expect yeah. it will be much less. We might get Burrow back by three or four. Um, if I'm Zach Taylor, I am thinking very hard next season about how much preseason football I want Burrow playing because it might need to be a significant amount if they want to hit the ground running. That's my that's issue one for me. Yeah. Can I respond to that? Or you you want to go on the issue? No, no, one? go right ahead. Right right. Okay. So I 100 percent agree with you. Um when I watched the game upon first watching, uh, you know, when you're trying to watch everything all at once, you want to watch Burrow, you're trying to watch, you know, Yosevich because T. Higgins wasn't playing, trying to see who the slot receiver is, whatever. And then you notice, like, hey, Burrow's moving around an awful lot back there. Doesn't look like he's able to get set really sucks because this expensive offensive line full of nine, you know, 80%, excuse me, 80% free agents that you had to go out and buy because you can't draft linemen. They can't block after watching it the second time. That was not the case. Now, Trent, 
Trent Brown looked like crap. He was bad. Yeah. Uh, Trent that's, Brown. That's a little subcategory that we don't need to get into. Trent Brown yeah. sucks. Marius Mims need to start as soon as humanly possible. I don't want to say like he sucks, but I, I think that a lot of it is is like, hey, you got to play every single snap. Maybe you're not fully healthy. You didn't play at all in the preseason either. And that seemed like that was his plan. You know what I mean? Like, and oh, that, well, you know, we're yeah, how, 90 days out. It's time. To, I know, exactly. And he looks slow. And pass blocking is supposed to be his thing. You know what I mean? But he looked slow. Uh, he looked, you know, guys got around him, guys cut back inside of him. There was one defense vendor outside the linebacker that just pushed him over. He's 380 pounds. He's not supposed to be pushed over like that. But it wasn't really the offensive line. It was very clear uh, when watching it the second time that Joe Burrow was rattled when he should not have been rattled. Yeah. Is that he was looking to check down or he was looking to run when he had time. He had time to sit there. And I think it's just... Maybe it's not like, hey, I have to get some snaps in the preseason to be physically like up to game speed. I think maybe it's a mental thing. I do. I need it's some. Yeah, I slow down. Yeah, and I think, like you said, that I mean, the they've taken this road so many times. Like, hey, we're not going to play him in the preseason. We're not going to play him, and it, this the same thing happens. Like, when are you going to take a different road? You know what I mean? And like you said, I think the best thing they could do with Burrow for right now is understand that there's a risk to playing him. But if you want to win football games, it's worth the risk. Because if he's not up to game speed in week one, then you might as well just write that game off. And I don't want to do that anymore. I don't want to do that anymore. So he's a great quarterback. I, if, if you're going to ask me, like, oh, hey, what's your quarterback's Achilles heel? Then I'm going to say, hey, it's this. Is he, start, he starts slow. He looks like crap at the beginning of the season. And so far, he's injury prone. But once he's him... He's him. You know what I'm saying? Like once he's once like uh, we saw it last year when he got back and his ankle was healthy before the wrist thing happened or not his ankle, but his calf uh, before the wrist thing happened, you could see it and you're like, oh, well, that's the guy again. You know what I mean? Like what the guy who showed up and played against the 49ers, you know what I mean? Just so, yeah, that's that's the thing. So I'm sorry to go on and on, but what's number two for you? Number two is we finally start. We need to have the Sam Hubbard conversation. Okay. We love Sam Hubbard. We do. Um, he should probably he should probably be easing his way out of the lineup at this point. Um, love him as a player. Love him as a person. Cincinnati kid. I get it. Um, he cannot produce at a high level anymore. And I get that it's just one game, but it's not just one game. It's last season as well. Um, he was supposed to come back healthy and he got the least pressure of anyone on that line by a significant amount. Um, if you want to argue, we should give him another game or two. Sure. I guess. Um, yeah. but the heir apparent is miles Murphy. Miles Murphy needs the chance to become that. Um, or we need to know that he can't become that. In either yeah. way, that involves taking a significant amount of snaps from Sam Hubbard, who I just don't think is the guy for the right edge anymore. I um, I mean, I agree and I don't agree. I, I do think that the heir apparent across, across from uh, Trey Hendrickson is Miles Murphy. I think that with a year of experience under his belt, um, had he been healthy to enter the season, I could see situations where they say, Hey, second long third down, we're going to take, you know, we're going to put miles in and we're going to take Sam out or we're going to move it, Sam inside, whatever. Uh, so I do agree that I think that miles Murphy is the future of the position, but he's on IR. And I think that, I mean, I'm not going to take Sam Hubbard. Back, true. Yeah. Once he comes back, then I could see what's a heavy rotation where, you know, Hubbard's getting a lot, not Hubbard, but um, uh, Miles Murphy's getting a lot of uh, I lot said of playing it time. I want to clarify. I meant take a game or two more than this to figure out how you feel about Sam Hubbard, not yeah. putting Miles Murphy in. Yes, gotcha. Yeah, I understand that has to yeah. take time. Yeah, I just I could see it being the case here soon. It's just I don't think it's going to be before midseason at all. So I I just think they trust him so much. Be. You know, it should be. I don't know. We'll see. I, I hope you're wrong. I do hope you're wrong. I think I you hope, so hope you're wrong too. Yeah. Yeah. So I love Hubbard, I but yeah, I'm too. not for a season and a game now. I really right. haven't been seeing out of him what I want to see out of him. 
Yeah, he uh, wasn't great uh, as a pass rusher. He was okay as a run stop. He had two stops scoring the PFF. So, uh, but that's always been like his thing is he's not great at anything, but he's really good at everything. You know what I mean? He's not the best pass no. rusher, but he's good. He's not the best run stopper, but he's good. You know what I, I mean? Think great locker room guy. Any pressures? I don't think he got any pressures last game. Um, uh, look. He. I might be exaggerating it. He did get, he got one hit, he got three pressures. Okay. Yeah. One okay. hit, two hurries, but it was this, he had the worst uh, pass rush grade. If you're just going by eyesight, then you're absolutely right because PFF had him as the worst graded pass rusher on the team in week one. So you're not right. wrong. I don't want to hammer home because it feels like, yeah. it feels bad. It feels bad because I do like Sam Hubbard. Like, yeah. like, so I don't like saying this kind of stuff, um, but it needed to be said, I felt like. And I have one more, though. I want to move on. I have one more take. Yep. Um, the Bengals need to live in 12 personnel. That is uh, incredibly yeah. clear. Um, I don't think they're going to, which is also really frustrating. I I agree with what you're saying. So um, if you don't know, 12 personnel would be two tight ends. Yeah. Um, but when, when they, in week one, when they had Drew Sample on the field with Eric Hall, it just opened all these crazy doors in the offense they ran the ball because they were able to run the, the ball they were able to throw the ball so it was just a great personnel personnel grouping i would have no issue doing it especially if you want to say hey how can we mitigate a cold burrow for the first you know how can, how can we mitigate the damage a cold burrow can do over yes. the first few few weeks oh let's run a lot of 12 personnel where they can't they're going to, ha- you know, they can't do this. We're going to drop everyone back and stop you from, you know what I'm saying? Yes. They have to say, hey, we're going to focus on the run because they're going to run. Uh, I, I totally agree with you. I hope they do it more this week because I think it'd be a great plan against Kansas City. But do you think they're going to? It doesn't no, feel like. No, of course not. Or it is always, I, re- I do respect Zach Taylor. I do respect this coaching staff. It has always felt like this staff had an idea of what this offense was meant to be. And they weren't very adaptable from that. Um, they do by like midseason, uh, especially they have they usually have done a great job of implementing that exact offense that they want to implement. But I wish they were more flexible. We saw it with yeah. Browning, and suddenly yeah. it all feels like the Browning thing's almost frustrating to me, as opposed to like a uh, a way to be a reason to be hopeful. Because yeah. the moment I saw how much they changed his offense to work for Browning, I went, oh, shit, it's a choice. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Like, it's not that, yeah, like, yeah. this is what... It's not that it's they just, can't oh, do you, it. Yeah, you just don't... You just won't do it. Like, you just right. won't. Like, you did it in a matter of days. Right. Like, and you just won't. Because you have this idea of this is what the offense should be. And I just, I I think they need to be more flexible. And to be specific, I think they need to put Eric All and Drew Sample out there on 60%, 70% of snaps. I really yeah. do. Like, I think it should be that much, especially in the early seasons. It would open up the run game. You could do a lot of fun stuff sure. with Chase Brown at running back in a scheme like that. Um, open them up for, like, uh, wide receiver style opportunities. Um, mm-hmm. you could do a lot of cool stuff. It, I don't know. It'd be a lot of fun. I think they'd be really, really effective from the limited amounts we saw. They will be really effective. And once Eric all gets under his feet as a pass catcher. Yeah. I don't know. It'd be fun. So I, I agree with you. I think it would be a lot of fun to see that early in the season until, you know, all four tires are on the road and everything's running, you know, everything's going, going well. Uh, I don't know how much they're going to change. I, I saw, I don't remember who said it on Twitter and it, and I think it was a video or X or whatever we want to call it now. Uh, but they said the Bengals got punched in the mouth and they're built for finesse. And it's clear that like, it's a finesse team and they can't be physical, which I don't think that's true. I don't, I, I think that they, I do think they are a finesse team. I do think they have the ability to get physical. It's just this this early season stuff. I don't know what, I don't know what the problem is. I think that we could both agree that problem solution number one needs to be an attempt. Hey, you need to give your, your starters a game, at least a full game. You know what I mean? Yeah. Before no more of this one series stuff. Um, I don't know, man. It's just, 
I understand that like this team's built to win a Super Bowl, and if you're going to win the Super Bowl in the AFC, you have to get past the Chiefs. And if you're going to get past the Chiefs, you have to be able to throw the ball 400 yards in a game. That's just a fact. And if you're not, you better play, have the best defense in the league, and you better be able to run the ball. You know what I mean? That's not the Bengals. What worries me is if it is true that the Bengals cannot handle a physical football game is the entire AFC North is built on physical football. Yeah. Is you have Najee Harris, you have Nick Chubb, you have um uh now you have Derrick Henry, you know, and I don't if I if I'm a team, if I'm a head coach and I have a quarterback who wants to throw the ball 40 plus times a game out of the shotgun, but I know that it's going to be easier to win if we run the ball, then we're going to run the ball. You know what I mean? We saw this time and time again in New England when Patriots won six Super Bowls up there with Tom Brady, the best quarterback in the NFL at the time, handing the ball off to some running back, whoever, whoever you want to say. I mean, they had a bunch of running backs, just 30 times in a game because it was going to win. Because they can't stop the run, we're going to win. That's what I want. Like you said, 12 personnel, run the ball. Run the ball and then go from there. But I'm not expecting it against the Chiefs. I think they're going to come out proving we're the same old Bengals. Yep. We can throw with the best of them. So, um, I mean, the only other thing I want to bring up is the is the mistakes. Uh, I, well, there's a ton of mistakes. Tackling errors on the defense. I think I saw something there were 14 missed tackles, which is just insane, absolutely insane. Um, and then the uh, the offensive turnovers. Um, Tanner Hudson, I don't, I have no idea, no concept of what he's trying to do there. He's not close enough to the, to the uh, goal line to stretch the ball out and he's moving around either way. Uh, it's a touchdown drive. That's the game that wins them the game. Um, and he fumbled the uh, Patriots return the ball or, you know, they, not return the ball, but they drove down the field on offense. They kicked the field goal and uh, that's a 10 point swing. And then there's a Charlie Jones fumble, which I'm not going to, get you know that that happens you see a lot of those fumbles or you know punt recovery punt return fumbles all the time the tanner hudson thing I, i'm much less less likely to forgive because it's a loaded tight end room man don't do stupid stuff that that isn't about uh whether or not we're likely to forgive that is very much about That's what happens are. when a few of these people comes back for, from yeah. ir uh yeah. The coaching staff is going to take a long, hard look at that moment yep. in deciding uh, who they need to cut from this roster to make room. Yeah. Well, Tanner McLaughlin was a healthy scratch just because, they, yeah. you know, it's a game day roster, which I get it. But if, if Tanner yeah, Hudson can't hold on to the ball, game day. no, not in a game day. But if, but if Tanner Hudson can't hold on to the ball, you know what I mean? Yep. If, if that's going to be a problem and, and you can't trust him in big moments, then why not put McLaughlin in? Let Hudson sit, you know? And then, like you said, uh, when guys come back from IR in week four, week five, whoever's not dressing in games, they're gone. Absolutely gone. Right out the door. So what, in your opinion, has to happen for the Bengals to at least be competitive? Like what big thing moving from week one to week two after you watch this game, this team play, what has to happen in your opinion? The first big thing. So I know what I think it is. Uh, I got a couple uh, I'm not going to harp on this because we literally just talked about it. If they want to win week two, they should be in 12 personnel. The okay. Chiefs have no tape on it, and that alone would provide a massive, massive swing in their favor, uh, as well as slowing down uh, the the defense as far as uh, pass rush, everything else yeah. for the Bengals. Um, don't need to go into that. We explain exactly why. Other than that, I don't worry about turnovers. Uh, I think if it was a, a consistent problem, games like that happen, and it's usually not a sign of things to come. It's tackle. Right. Yeah. We need to tackle. We need to be able to tackle football players. It is wild. It was, it was one of the by about third quarter, I stopped even reacting really when they would miss those tackles. It's just like a sigh, whatever. Because at that yeah. point, it become the norm. It was a wild, wild showing as yeah, far as their just inability to tackle anybody. If yeah. I was going to want them to improve any one thing, it's just don't be afraid to tackle them, man. Yeah. What about you? So my big thing is it's got it's just got to be Joe, Joe Burrow's play. 
it's that's sure. number one number one i mean i would love to see them put you know put in some or run out of a lot of 12 personnel i'm not expecting it but even if they do joe burrow has to play better he has to step up he has to play better he has to hit open receivers he has to have the courage to sit in the pocket and throw downfield he can't look at the pressure and not you know not be looking downfield pocket awareness has kind of been his superpower and uh that's got to come back so um that's my big thing that's i mean that's the big thing and then you know obviously the tackling um i i don't know i don't know how do you feel how do you feel about this game i mean do you feel like, like you're already game? yeah I and mean, do you feel like you're already looking at the commander's game as in like oh we're going to be 0 and 2 going into week 3 is that how you feel yes i do um okay I'm not happy about it. I don't want to be a bummer. I don't think it's like a lost yeah. season or anything. I do think that once again, we're going to be behind the eight ball uh, playing catch up for a significant portion of the season. Cause it seems to be that the only way we can operate. Um, mm -hmm. But based off what I saw last Sunday, I cannot imagine they clean up enough quick yeah. enough to beat the chiefs. I, expect I to agree with you. I agree. I expect to be 0-2 heading into week three, and then I hope to be 2-2 two two heading into week five. Yes. Um, I do expect a competitive game. I don't think the Bengals will get just blown out. I think that they'll come out, they'll look better. I, I can't sit here and say they're going to lead, you know, by any, you know, significant amount at any point in the game. Uh, but I do think we're going to come out and we're going to be like, oh, that's Joe Burrow. There's there's Joe Burrow. I see Joe Burrow there, and we're gonna say, oh, there's the tackling. You know that w we see it now. Um, I just don't think it's gonna be enough. I think the thing that really worries me the most, to be honest with you, is the Chiefs get up by a score or two, and then we just can't stop Pacheco. We just yeah. we just won't be able to do it, and then that's gonna be just a signal for everybody from here on out. Just run, just run. It's two weeks in a row they couldn't stop the run. Just run. Um, yeah, I mean, if we can stop the run, we've shown we can beat we can beat uh, um, Mahomes and the Chiefs. It's just if we can't stop the run, there's no shot, in my opinion. Right. Um. But yeah, I I, I do I, I don't want to be a bummer. I I just think we're being realistic, just based on what we I saw. I also from think the we're Chiefs. being a bummer. I mean, well, yeah, I, we are. It's also we are bummer. being bummers. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is a bummer. But but I you know it is what it is. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. I'm not going to sit here and yeah. I'm not. I'm a homer, but I'm a realistic yeah. homer. You know yeah. what I mean? So yeah, zero and two, but I do. I I'm thinking like a field goal game. I do. I don't think the Chiefs. I don't know what they're favored by. Um, but if it's like a full touchdown, I take the Bengals and the points on that. So we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Um, got anything else, man? Nope. That's it. Bummer okay. of a week. Yeah. Um, not how yeah. I wanted to go into week two. No. But I do expect significant improvement. I just think it's going to take a few weeks to get there. I agree. Um, I also think I do want to bring up that even though I know it's just one week, things could have been worse in the division because they're only only one team won the division. That was the Steelers. So there's not there's what not a, like we're not the only losing team in the division. You know what I mean? I mean the Browns yeah. lost. And the other thing is I know that we feel bad about ourselves as or for ourselves as Bengals fans. You could have been born in Cleveland. You could have been just one decision away from from your parents. You could have been born clean, born in Cleveland, born as a Browns fan, and look at the mess they're in. So yes, should be happy. All right. Uh, so again, we are on the Believe Network for the uh, podcast side, for the audio side. Uh, Believe in Cincy, B L E A V in Cincy, uh, is the name of the channel. It's us. It's OBI. It's Matt and Willie No Ball with uh, Matt Minich and Willie Lutz, and then uh, talking football with Bengal Jim and friends. Uh, and then on YouTube, we are on OBI. Uh, the Orange and Black Insider, it is us, and also John and Anthony at OBI. Uh, and then, obviously, anything that's on OBI is on CincyJungle.com, so check us out there. Um, we'll be back next week to talk about, hopefully, it'd be great to talk about, hey, they're one and one. That'd be awesome. What I a like great show. That my hand twice in a row, once because I promised we would win and we lost, but the next time, I said we yes. would lose. And we won. Yeah. It'd be great. Yeah. That would be nice. That would be nice. So, uh, you got a final score prediction real quick? No, but I think we'll lose. Uh, I'll have them prepared from here on out. I forgot we were doing the final score predictions. <laughs> um, I think we'll lose by, by a field goal. 
I do. Okay. I agree with you on that. The Chiefs always bring out the best in us. Yeah. Um, I think it'll be a while. I think it'll be a running game for the Chiefs, and I think they're going to run over us because they saw what happened last time, and they'd be foolish not to just continue yeah. on that. Um, but I do expect it to be a field goal game, so I expect it to be this, you know, three to five. Okay. I'm going to say 24-20. Chiefs sure. win by four. So, all right, we'll see you next week. Who day? Who day?